Good afternoon, my name is Nikesha Johnson, um, and today I'll be talking to you about actomycosis, which is the condition caused by the bacteria Actomyces isoraeli. Alrighty, so as a brief overview, first I'll let you know, or I'll tell you about the definition of Actomyces. Um, I'll give you the definition of Actomyces isoraeli. I'll talk to you about the various causes of the disease, the site of infection, the risk factors, symptoms associated with the disease, as well as prevention mechanisms. Alrighty, so definition of actomyosis is really. Actinomycosis is a long-term bacterial infection that is commonly um, found in the face and neck region. It's usually characterized by the thin branching filaments of the gram-positive bacteria. Um, and also, this particular disease, actomycosis, is also known as lumpy jaw. And I'll show you a little later in the presentation why it's known as lumpy jaw. Alrighty, so here's a picture of the actual bacteria. Um, and of course, you can see that it's gram positive, denoted by the deep purple staining due to the thick peptidyl glycan layer of the bacteria. Um, and you can also see that it's a bacillus shaped bacteria. Alrighty, so here's a mild case of lumpy jaw. Here, you can see the lump, of course, on the um, individual's um, jaw region, and you can also see the draining sinus tracts, and I'll talk to you a little bit about this later in the presentation. And again, this is a mild case. Alrighty, so some of the causes of actomyces. Okay, so actomyces, actomyces um, which causes actomycosis, um, is usually caused by an anaerobic bacteria called actomyces israeli. This is usually found, and it's commonly found, in the throat, gut, the genital tract, also in the nose, in the mouth. Um, and this particular bacteria is usually non-pathogenic, meaning that it doesn't really cause the host any particular problems or um, any disease. It doesn't um, cause a disease in the host usually. However, when this bacteria um, gets into the bloodstream, and that's when the problem actually arises. So, because of this bacteria is normally located in the nose and throat region, um, the actomy actomycosis is commonly, in, commonly found in the face and the neck. And it's also important to know that this particular disease is not contagious. Alrighty. So, some other causes. So basically, um, when the bacteria enters the facial tissue after trauma, surgery, or infection, um, which, is commonly, which is a common cause in like dental abscess and oral surgery, it forms an abscess, and this abscess then produces like a hard red purple, purplish lump. Um, and this is what you usually see on the jaw. Okay. So eventually, the abscess breaks through the skin surface, producing the drainage sinus tracts, which is what I showed you in the other picture. And I'll show you another picture of this later. Um, also, actomycosis can sometimes occur in the chest, and this is called pulmonary actomycosis, and also in the ab abdominal region. And like I said, this is usually due to like some trauma, um, and what this does is that it... Um, allows the pathogen to become an opportunistic pathogen, and so it um, enters the body's blood, uh, the bloodstream, of course, and then it causes problems. Um, usually patients who experience the um, severe actomycosis on the jaw region, they lose the uh, temporal mandibular angle of the jaw, and this is usually caused by extreme swelling. Actomycosis 
can also be found in the pelvic region, and this is usually introduced um, to women who receive I an IUD vaginally. Um, and like I said, it's usually found in the genital tract. However, when it crosses um, the uh, when it crosses into the bloodstream, it becomes a problem. Actomycosis can also be found in the thoracic region and also the intra and abdominal region. And this is usually denoted by um, extreme and massive lesions. And I'll show you a picture of this later. Okay. So another site for the infection um, is the musculoskeletal region. Um, and again, this is um, denoted by lesions um, either on the muscle um, that, and there's also there can be lesions on the bone and also in the joints. However, this is a really, really, really rare case of actinomycosis. Um, and then also, actinomycosis of the jaw um, occurs after post chemotherapy and radiation treatment. And again, this is important to know because individuals who have suppressed immune systems for any reason um, are susceptible to actually um, getting this infection. And another site of infection could also be in the cardiac region, and this is um, endocarditis. Alrighty. So like I mentioned earlier, um, the, there could be um, actomycosis found in the muscular region. And this is denoted here. The patient actually has the lesions on the muscles. Now what you're seeing here is the um, draining sinus tracts, like I mentioned earlier, which is where the fluid, which is where some of the fluid leaks um, because of inflammation occurs. So here, some of the draining sinus tracts right here. Alrighty, so this individual actually has the um, throat ectomycosis, and again, like I said, since it's commonly found in this region, these are the regions that it normally affects. And this is the signature draining sinus tract right here. Alrighty, so this is the severe case of ectomycosis. Um, again, you can see the draining sinus tracts, as well as, like I mentioned earlier, due to the extreme inflammation, this particular patient has lost the temporal mandibular angle and so all you see is extreme swelling. You don't even see the jawbone is what I'm trying to say. And this is a severe, this is severe throat lump. Alrighty. Some of the risk factors of actomycosis. Of course, um, poor hygiene, um, suppressed immune systems, reoccurring um, oral abscess, um, facial trauma, and recent oral surgery. Also, thoracic um, trauma. So, anything that introduces the bacteria into the bloodstream would be horrible. And this is where you get the um, actomycosis at these sites. So some of the symptoms um, associated with actomycosis. Draining sores in the skin, especially on the chest walls from lung infections with actomycosis. Fever, minimal to no pain. Um, like I showed you earlier with this, the guy who had the extreme case of actomycosis. Um, Individuals who, extreme or feel, who experience the extreme swelling sometimes have minimal or no pain. Um, swelling are hard red to reddish purple lumps on the face or the upper neck and also extreme weight loss. Alrighty. So some of the tests and some of the signs that they look for, um, the test would be they would take a culture of the tissue and um, look at this under the microscope and um, if they see the actomycosis species, then of course they denote that the person has actomycosis. Um, also, upon examination of the drain fluid under the microscope, um, one thing that is very significant to this particular uh, microorganism uh, is that it has sulfur granules in the fluid. 
and they are usually denoted by yellowish granules made of clumped organisms. Also, um, some of the signs are characteristic lesions, like I showed you early, earlier. So these are usually dense, fibrous, woody-like lesions, um, and also again the sulfur granules in the, um, the fluid. And then in some cases, the infection may advance to tissue planes with no respects to anatomical boundaries. And this was shown um, on the person's arm and also on the jaw. Alrighty, so some prevention mechanisms uh, would be definitely, definitely, definitely uh, maintain good dental hygiene. So, brush your teeth twice a day, floss daily, and replace your toothbrush regularly. Alrighty, so I just went over the bacteria Actomyces israeli, and here are my references. Alrighty. Thank you. Have a good day.